Welcome! You are just in time to take a deep dive into Matthew Perry's human design chart. Yes, the very Matthew Perry who played Chandler Bing in the iconic Friends TV series. Now I have the utmost respect for this man and I'm creating this presentation for you today from a place of love, from a place of wanting to help us all understand his life journey, which I believe can also help us understand our own life journey a little bit more. Now, obviously, hey, he had some awesome experiences throughout his lifetime, as well as some tough challenges. And in his human design chart, we can see where some of that awesomeness came from and how he maybe brought that into his world, as well as some of the tough times, the health challenges that he had, including the addictions. It's a fascinating look. Um, there's so many revelations that we can see in his chart. Now, if you do not know me, my name is Claire Jovanovich and I am a qualified naturopath and a human design analyst. So I am in a very unique position to understand how the emotions, the energetics, the spiritual aspect of us influences our biochemistry, our anatomy and our physiology. And I'll be using all of that as I look into Matthew's um, human design chart now. So let's take a look. Okay, let's begin with the basics of Matthew Perry's human design. His energy type was a generator, like about 31% of the population, which means his strategy was to respond. And interestingly, his authority was sacral, which meant he was also designed to respond. He was kind of like a double responder, responding for him, which means um, knowing the difference in his body when it feels like it's a yes and when it's a no, when things are correct and they're a yes, they feel good when they feel like, oh, that's a no. <laughs> and ideally you follow that through as a no. His ability to do that, to respond, was ideally very, very important for him to learn. And we'll go into that more later on. It gets very interesting. For now, we're just going to rush through this. Well, not rush. We're going to go through this beginning stuff quite quickly. So as a generator, his signature theme was obviously satisfaction. So the more that he reaches the end of his day or has an experience and goes, oh, that was really satisfying. The more on track he is, the more in alignment with his natural authenticity he was. And when he had those moments, those days, those weeks, those years, whatever it was, of feeling frustration of, oh, that was such a frustrating day. Oh, that was such a frustrating thing. Why did I do that? Oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> More of those moments showed when that he was out of alignment with his authentic self because satisfaction was his ideal, natural, most healthy way. Now, his profile was a 2-4 which I find really interesting. So as a two, he was, I would suggest, a hermit. Twos like to generally stay in their cave, in their own world, until they're called out. It's like, hey, excuse me, knock, knock, knock. You've got this talent over here. Can you come out and be part of this thing, please? Friends was very much <laughs> being called out to do this thing that he was so talented at. And twos are also called the naturals. They're natural at something. And it did seem like he was a natural at acting. Now the four in his profile, that's interesting because that's very much about the ability to network and find your opportunities through your network. So he was in a show obviously called Friends. <laughs> Hello, network. <laughs> but I would suggest that a lot of his opportunities a lot of the next steps in his journeys, the things that he needed to, um, I don't know, create whatever he wanted to create and manifest, the opportunities, the next steps probably, most likely, came through the people that he already knew. That's how it works as a four, when a four is in your profile. Now, his incarnation cross, this is quite interesting. He was the right angle cross of contagion. Now, the Incarnation Cross is made up of four energies. It's this conscious sun here, this unconscious sun here, this conscious earth here, and this unconscious earth over here. So that meant that he was 29, 30, 8, 14. 
Now his incarnation cross of contagion means this and I'll quickly read it to you. This cross carries the energy to say yes. It also carries enthusiasm for life and is driven to make things grand by marching to the beat, which is interesting because he has this channel here, which is about uh, being in a flow, being basically marching to the beat. So that's part of that coming in there. Uh, it's very much a rhythm energy. These people are here to spread excitement and the word about whatever it is they are passionate about. The commitment to things is unbounded and fuels their enthusiasm. However, they are here on earth in a physical body and they have some physical constraints. They need to set some limits to the number of things they can say yes to. They must ensure they agree only to what they're absolutely passionate about. If not, they will surely burn out. Now, it's these last two sentences here that they need to set limits to the number of things they say yes to. Otherwise, they're not going to be passionate about all the things they do and that they're going to burn out. Well, I believe that was very significant in Matthew's journey. And we're going to explore why. So let's continue because we will circle back to this later on. Let's begin by looking at Matthew's conscious son, which was number 29, which is this here. And it was called, it was called, it is called, <laughs> Abysmal, the Gate of Perseverance. It's located in the sacral energy center, which is right here, which is the energy center, which is very much about that yes and that no responding energy. So again, this highlights where a lot of that strong ability to say yes and say no comes from. It's in its highest expression. This gate says it's worth the experience. These people know how to say yes to life. And there's a huge potential for these people to commit fully to things in the long term, provided they feel aligned with them. Now, it did seem that, that Matthew committed to friends in the long term. Um, and he did seem mostly at least passionate about it from the outside perspective. So that's an interesting place to begin. However, in its shadow expression, now just a note about shadow expressions and gates. Every gate has a highest expression and a shadow expression. And most of us shift between both the highest and the shadow. Sometimes we're more in the highest or the shadow according to each gate and according to the experiences that we're having. But it's totally okay to be in the shadow sometime because that's where we go down and we learn so we can come up with all these new experiences for our evolution. So in this situation, the shadow energy of this sun gate for him was that these people can say yes to too many things and they can become too daring. So we're already learning that the um, importance, how important it was for Matthew to say yes to things that only align for him brings him health and well-being and that when he says yes to too many things, that can start causing some problems. Now, the body part that this gate relates to is the sacral plexus. You may say, what is the sacral plexus, Claire? Good question. I got you covered. <laughs> the sacral plexus is a nerve plexus. It's a bundle of nerves that provides motor and sensory nerves for the posterior thigh, which is the back of the thigh, most of the lower leg, the foot, and part of the pelvis. Why am I telling you this? Well, this is actually where it starts to get very interesting. Now, this is an article from uh, canoe.com, but it was uh, easily available on many websites. Basically, what Matthew did is that he, I'm um, it, high out of his mind, Matthew Perry once glued his hands to his legs to stop moving. So what did he choose to do? Essentially, he glued his hands to his sacral plexus. Part of him knew that the sacral plexus was such an important part of him, he subconsciously, unconsciously carried out an act that, hoping in his intention, would slow him down. Okay? We're going to circle back to this later on, but I'm just planting the seeds of the connection between his body and what he chose to do, his actions in the real world, and how this has been manifesting. Okay? It gets more interesting. 
Now, Matthew had the 2946 channel, which is here. So his son connected to this 46 over here. Now, this is called the channel of discovery. Now, essentially, this suggests that his soul is committed to the process of personal discovery, even if it's really hard, even if it's really challenging. So personal discovery, I suggest, was a very important um, process, learning experience for him this lifetime, one of the reasons that he came here. There's also a desire to share their learnings and the wisdoms that these people have gathered. And when following a strategy, so when Matthew was following his strategy, he had the potential to succeed where others fail because he's willing to push through the hard times, okay? A lot of this relates to the 46. The 46 is interesting because we say here that he has the potential to succeed if he's following his strategy, yes, but also because of the 46 is related to synchronicity. So if he's following his strategy, he will naturally be in a synchronistic flow, which guides him where he need to be, needs to be to get to the next thing that he wants to do, be experienced in his world, what he's trying to manifest. There's a big synchronistic energy here. The 46 is also, <laughs> if you are not in alignment with your, with your true self, the 46 can knock you down and slow you down so that you can actually have the space to go, oh, okay, there's something here I need to reassess. I have the 46. Um, it can be a challenge. It tells you fast if you're out of alignment. I have noticed the 46 can express itself as accidents uh, if you are out of alignment with your true self for too long. And we will see that circle back into uh, what we see later on with Matthew. So this channel is very important in his chart. Now, if we move on to his conscious earth, which is here, number 30, it's called Clinging Fire, the Gate of Feelings. Now, it's located in the solar plexus, which is here, number 30. Hello. <laughs> now, it is its, in its highest expression, there is a desire to feel intensely. Matthew would have had, I suggest, a yearning for new experiences and a natural inner fire, passion and drive to really connect with these experiences. So in order, so this is the grounding energy to the sun that he had. So in order for him to say yes to things that were valuable to him, he needed to feel that very deeply that he was connected to this thing. If he did, that was a very healthy expression for him and a healthy way for him to live his life. So that passion, that intensity was just paramount in his world in order for him to say yes. But in its shadow expression, if you're not following your strategy, so if Matthew was not following his strategy when he selected his experiences, he could have felt like he was constantly being judged for his choices because his solar plexus, this is in a very emotional area. This is the house, the, the main seat of the emotions, okay? That's why he could have felt judged or that he, he could have felt that being in the public eye gave him his sense of always being in trial and error, always doing the wrong thing, or people were always judging him. Now, he has an undefined solar plexus, which means that when he's in this shadow expression here, not when, not if, but when, because I'm, I'm sure that happened, most, happens to most people with, a, with an, uh, an undefined solar plexus at some stage. It, when you have an undefined solar plexus, Essentially, you're an empath. You are feeling, you're a receptor for the emotions of not just yourself, but all the people who are around you. So if he was saying no to things, or if he was saying yes to things that he didn't really want to when he wanted to say no, he could have said, let me say that again, he could have said yes to things when he really wanted to say no, because it may have felt easier for him because he didn't have to deal with the backlash of the emotions from someone else if he said no, if they didn't like what he said. 
because he would have learned throughout his life that when someone says, when he says no to people and the people don't necessarily want him to say no, the emotions that come at him can be very overwhelming for him and he can soak them up like a sponge, okay? That often dictates the emotional patterns in someone with an undefined solar plexus until they realize what is happening there. So it can totally be harnessed and used as your superpower, um, but it is something that you generally need to be con consciously aware of. Yeah, so we're talking about his open solar plexus there. All right, now which body part does this relate to? It is his digestion. Now, again, this is very interesting because this headline says, Matthew Perry just spent three months in the hospital after a gastrointestinal perforation. Matthew's susceptibility to digestive issues when imbalanced, when saying yes to things when he probably really wanted to say no, resulted in a health emergency. Resulted in a health emergency in the area of his body, his digestive tract, which was ideally designed to be quite grounding and earthing for him when he is following his strategy and authority. But this, as I said, this issue shows that maybe he wasn't following his strategy of saying, of following his respond, ideal responding mechanism of yes or no um, from the sacral and that resulted in this issue here. So I hope that by this point you're starting to see some connections between how Matthew was potentially interacting in the world and how that could have been affecting his body. Now, this is no judgment on Matthew himself. It's, pu it's, it's a beautiful learning tool. And I believe that he would be very okay with being an example in this situation um, later on because of what we'll see more in his chart. <laughs> All right, let's jump over to his unconscious son, which is over here. It is number eight. It's called holding together contribution. It lives in the throat center, which is the manifestation center. In its highest expression, this shows us that Matthew was an influencer. He had a deep desire to make a positive contribution to the world and to inspire others towards change in his own way. Now, he very much, I suggest, wanted to lead by example and that he had the courage to be different, wild and original. He was totally okay with being himself. Now, this is a very, as a reminder, a very unconscious energy to influence. I don't think he was going around going, oh, I must influence the world. What thing can I choose to influence someone in? <laughs> I think it naturally came through him and through his experiences. It colored how he influenced the world, which we'll build upon in a minute. Now... This is super interesting as an influencer because this is a screenshot from Matthew Perry's website. If you did not know, he had the Matthew Perry, he has the Matthew Perry Foundation. The website is still there. His quote, this is his quote, it says, when I die, I don't want friends to be the first thing that's mentioned. I want helping others to be the first thing that's mentioned. And I'm going to live the rest of my life proving that. Hello, influencer energy which is why I also think he's okay with me using him as an example here to help us understand ourselves even more. Now, conti to continue the quote, he says, addiction is far, start again, addiction is far too powerful for anyone, sorry, addiction is far too powerful for anyone to defeat alone, but together, one day at a time, we can beat it down. Now, this highlights so super clearly Matthew's deep desire to make a positive contribution to the world and to inspire others towards change. Hello, gate number eight. <laughs> All right. Now, in its shadow expression, I'm just going to have some water. All right. In its shadow expression up here, 
It's possible that Matthew felt melancholy. He felt sadness. If people weren't paying attention to him, if they weren't giving him enough attention, or if they weren't giving him the attention that he would prefer the focus to be upon. So if he wanted this thing over here to be the focus of importance, the influence that he's having, but if people are looking over here and putting more emphasis on this, this could have made him feel a bit sad and a bit maybe frustrated and a bit melancholic. Now this could have led to, well in the shadow expression, it can lead to rebellious behavior. And I think the rebellious behavior is a result of um, the focus being here when they want it to be here and the rebellious, rebellious behavior is kind of a distraction of like, no, no, don't look at that thing. Look over here. It's a manifestation energy from the throat area. Again, it's a um, open center. It's an undefined center for Matthew. So it could absolutely become his superpower with his ability to speak his um, words into the world. I'm, I'm, I'm progressing too far here. Hang on. We're going to touch on that in a second. <laughs> so which body part is this? Surprise, surprise. It's the larynx. It's the voice box. Now, it's the voice box in the throat energy center that helped Matthew create the iconic speech patterns that made Chandler Bing so memorable. Now, if all the Friends material was not copyright, I would totally put so many Chandler Bing um, quotes in, from the show in here right now, but I respect the fact that they are copyright, so I will not do that. So please use your memory, insert them here. <laughs> all right. Now, Matthew, now, we do also suggest that Matthew could have questioned his contribution to the world at times because this is again interesting from a health perspective firstly let's read the, um, the headline friend star matthew perry rushed to hospital's icu for a tracheotomy pronounce that well tracheotomy a tracheotomy is where they insert um, an incision into the voice box where the larynx is and they did that to um, insert a tube to help him breathe better. I think it may have been part of when he had the gastrointestinal perforation, but I'm not certain sure, not certain of that. Um, regardless, he had a tracheotomy. It impacted his larynx. And does the tracheotomy damage the vocal cords? Well, yes, it can impair the larynx. It can impair the, lo the vocal cords. Now, we also know that in regards to talking about this throat center, which was a powerful, a power center for him in so many ways. It was also a weak area. He needed the surgery here. And there were so many reports over the years, unfortunately, about Matthew's per Matthew Perry's speech changing, about it slurring, about it being different. Just people noticing that his larynx, that his voice box had changed which suggests that he may have dipped into that shadow phase in those moments. Fascinating, yes? I think so. <laughs> now, let's look at the unconscious earth energy, which was designed for Matthew to balance that influencer energy. Now over here, it's gate number 14, and it is called the gate of power skills. And where does it live? Again, it's in the sacral center. Look how his sacral is lit up like a Christmas tree. It is so clear that he was designed to respond. Yes, I'm saying this again. <laughs> Following his ideal yes and his no's as guidance to give him a life that gave him the most satisfaction in this lifetime. Now, in the highest expression. The unconscious, this unconscious earth energy, it needed to be passionate about what it was saying yes to. And it also needed to be inspired as well by what it said yes to. So in order to influence others in a way that satisfied Matthew, he had to be passionate. He had to be inspired about the thing. When he was passionate inspired, and inspired, then he naturally became the influencer. Now, this is how he felt that he was 
most satisfied when he was making his contribution to the world. Now, interesting, what we're looking at over here in these two energies, there's a similar theme to what's going on over here. So we're hearing so many times, obviously, that Matthew was designed to respond very strongly using the yes and the no's. But we're also learning repeatedly <laughs> that Matthew needed to be passionate, super intensely passionate about what he said yes to on a conscious and an unconscious level, because that's how it moved him into alignment with his true self. Now, again, going back to the website, going back to that quote about what he wants to be recognized for, be an influencer in. What I just said before, it reveals that Matthew's deep desire to make a positive contribution and to inspire others towards change when he's doing what he loves it's actually really healthy and really grounding for him, okay? Remember, he has a deep desire to feel, a deep, deep desire to feel passion, and that is healthy for him when it correlates with his yes energy. Now, in the shadow expression, these people can be compromising too often. And saying yes to the thing, yes to things that they don't that don't genuinely inspire them. Okay, now this is a very contagious energy. This fourteen here, for good or for bad, which means when Matthew was saying yes to things that lit him up, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so passionate about this thing. Yes, let's do it. He was the influencer. It was a contagious energy that people were like, oh, he's so passionate about that. What's he doing? I want to help him. I want to be part of this thing that he's doing. Positive expression. In the shadow expression, if he was in the energy of saying yes to things that didn't really inspire him or that he wasn't passionate about, that could have created a chaos within him, which was contagious. The chaos spread out from him and the people around him in varying degrees felt the chaos as well. It was not contained within him, within his mind it spilled down. So it's a very contagious energy for good or for bad, for positive or negative, for shadow or for light, whatever it is you choose to um, use, whatever words. <laughs> now, this 14 energy relates to the small intestine. Remember how Matthew had a gastrointestinal perforation? This article right here. Well, as a reminder, a gastrointestinal perforation can occur along any point in the wall of the gastrointestinal tract, including the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. So we know that his digestion was potentially a strong point in him, but also a weak point in him when he was out of alignment. Particularly at this point, we see that his small intestine, uh, his, his bowels, his intestinal area, was very vulnerable when he was out of alignment. Now, what does this tell us about Matthew Perry so far? Well, the sun and the earth energies are four of the most important gates in your human design, okay? That's why they make up the incarnation cross. Being out of alignment with the higher expression of these energies, which are authentic to you, can lead to health problems, as we have been seeing. Now, if you become significantly out of alignment with your life purpose, with your life path, with who you really are, your certain energies wake up. Now, I truly believe that this is what happened to Matthew, and I will show you why. But first, the question is, what is sudden in human design? I'll just, I'll just note that this is probably, to me, one of the most fascinating areas of human design, probably because I have fallen into my Saturn energies many times, unfortunately, um, but they have taught me a lot. Um, so I really understand how deeply they can influence your life and how deeply they have the potential to change you for the better if you are aware of them. It is something that I truly believe each person needs to know in their human design chart because it really can influence how you interact in the world and it's very empowering information. So essentially, your Saturn leaves you alone if you're listening to and acting on your own 
personal truth if you are in alignment. However, if you stray from your authenticity, like I said before, Saturn wakes up and places a challenge in your path. Now, this is meant to slow you down, okay? So that you can look at your life and address what is not working. Now, Saturn is genuinely trying to stop you from drifting further from your purpose, further from your authenticity, and help you realign with your life and with who you really are. So essentially, the less you visit this energy, the more you go, oh, I don't identify with the energy at all, <laughs> the better it is. Because the more you are actually activating your unique gifts and living from your authenticity. Okay? So let's start with looking at Matthew's Saturn placements, and he does have two. We're going to start with the unconscious. It's here. Okay? His unconscious, it's this symbol here. Uh, okay, so his unconscious Saturn is 27, called Nourishing the Gate of Caring. It again is in the sacral energy center. Hello, responding. All right. Now, in its, in its highest expression, in Gate 27, there's a blend of grounded in and intuitive energy that naturally responds to people's needs in the moment. In the moment is important okay they care for themselves and they willingly give of themselves to help others the thing is with Saturn energies I find people rarely or they have to be very evolved to express the highest um, expression of their Saturn energy it's generally something you have to learn to step into because it can be easy to step into you generally seem to be more aligned with the shadow side, okay? So Saturn wakes up in this situation. If there's an imbalance between self-care, between caring for yourself and care of others and meeting other people's demands, okay? So essentially, if Matthew was sacrificing himself too much to please other people in the long term, Saturn goes, whoa, hey, dude, this is not who you really are. You are off your life path now. You have some other potentials here which align with you more. We want you to slow down and notice those. Okay, so again, the saying yes, when you didn't really want to say yes, when you wanted to say no, for too long, it directly woke up his Saturn. Okay, and again, it's related to his sacral plexus, that area on the back of his thighs, his lower leg, his foot part of his pelvis and as a reminder hey remember this <laughs> high out of his mind Matthew Perry once glued his hands to his legs to stop moving so what we have so far Matthew has two placements that highlight his connection to his sacral plexus okay so subconsciously unconsciously Matthew knew that he needed to slow down because he was saying yes to things when he actually wanted to say no. He kind of probably wanted to get out of some things, I would suggest. He knew that he needed to slow down and that this part of his body could help him do that. Hence the glue on the hands, sticking them on the thighs to his legs. So fascinating, right? There may be more sacral plexus um, placements in his chart. I haven't looked for them. I don't know. But two is quite significant. Super interesting. Now, I say super interesting, but this is where it gets like super, super interesting. <laughs> All right. Conscious Saturn, which is over here. Saturn, uh, Saturn. Matthew's conscious Saturn was number 24. Right here. It's called the return gate of rationalization. It's in the Ajna, which is essentially the third eye. Okay, it's an area of insights. In its highest expression, creative thinking, focusing on a problem, and then coming out the other side with a revelation that helps solve an issue is what happens. So you go, so you have you have a problem, you have an insight that something needs to be solved. And then you go through the process of 
creatively thinking about it and going, mm, I'm trying to work it out. And then you come out the other side going, ah, here's the solution to that thing I've been trying to work out. That's the process essentially of the 24 in an ideal situation. However, the Saturn energy wakes up when, this Saturn energy wakes up when, you get caught in the addictive pattern of thinking about something. So for example, you could be doing things that you want to say no to, but you're saying yes to, it's like, oh, how do I get out of this thing? Oh, I don't like this thing. How do I know? How do I say no? How do I get out? Oh, this is so annoying. This is so frustrating. Oh, I want to get out of it, but I don't know how. And it's this loop, 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 loop. Okay, it's addictive. Then the person gets unable to shift from the addiction, okay, because they don't have, okay, let's just read it, unable to shift the addiction to an inventive solution, caught in the loop of thinking, not finding a solution for it, is a problem, because finding the solution is when they connect with the stillness and the silence that they are so deeply craving. This circles back to the hands, being stuck to the legs. Remember over here, he wanted, he stuck his hands to his sacral plexus to find more still and more calm and more peace, okay? So unconsciously, he wanted to slow himself down because he couldn't calm his thoughts over here, okay? These people get sad that they cannot find the resolution to this addictive thought, this addictive thing that's in their brain, they want it so badly. They're sad that there is no resolution, okay? Which leads to an inability to relax their mind and their body. Again, glue hands, two legs, subconsciously, universe, please help me slow down, calm down, find some stillness. You see what I mean? What you need to know is, Having conscious Saturn in gate 24, right here, right here, <laughs> gives a person a huge vulnerability to developing addictive behaviors. Those addictive thoughts can translate over time into addictive behaviors that express themselves in the world. Okay, now the 24 is the only gate that I'm aware of of all of the 64 human design gates that is specifically connected to addictions. Okay, the only one. And he has it in his Saturn. Okay, yeah, fascinating. Of course, other elements contribute as well. Um, the more open centers that you have, the more vulnerable you can feel, the more you can feel like you need to fill the space of your openness with things which can contribute to addictions. And it's worth noting that Matthew has a completely open head, which means he probably felt pressure from the outside world. His, his mind was filled with pressures, um, thinking, 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 what other people are thinking as well. It was just like constantly, constantly, constantly. He was absorbing, he was receptive to both his, to both his thoughts, what other people's th thoughts were. And it was probably very, very, very difficult for him to calm his mind because he had other people's thoughts in there and he had his, his people's thoughts in there. And he was combine that with down here. Oh, I want to say no, but then how will they feel? Or oh, I think that they might react in, in a way that I'm uncomfortable with that I, that I kind of want to avoid. And then, then I churn that over in his brain, over in his brain. I don't like that. Well, what do I do about it? Oh, it's a continual process. Okay, so this open head is quite significant in a nutshell. Now, it was no secret that Matthew struggled with addictions. He used both drugs and alcohol to his detriment. There are obviously many articles about this and he mentions it in his book. Just this one alone it says Matthew Perry's radical honesty about his addiction. Okay, we know about the addiction. His addictive battle helped us all. Hello, influencer helped us all. Now, the addiction is something he was vulnerable to, but it could have contributed to him influencing the world in something that he mentioned on his website. Hello, inspiring others to make a change. Matthew's human design Saturn placement, as I just said, suggests that having a vulnerability to addictions 
was actually part of his life plan, this incarnation. So that kind of decreases the resistance about the experience that he had, do you not think? Now, to be clear, this does not mean, this does not mean that Matthew was destined to have addictions. No, no, not saying that. But what it does show that this is his weak spot. He was susceptible to addictions if he became significantly out of alignment with his true self. We all have weak spots. We all have susceptible susceptibility to different things. His was addictions, in my opinion, according to his human design. Okay, here is why. The body part the 24 relates to is the brain. Okay, now this includes the ventral striatum, <laughs> the basal gang ganglia, and the neocortex, including the prefrontal cortex. Research shows that all of these parts of the brain are involved in addictions. Now, here are just two articles that show, they're actually peer-reviewed artic peer articles, <laughs> that show that these part of the brains are involved in addictions. We've got the basal ganglia listed here. We've got the prefrontal cortex. We've got the ventral striatum. Uh, da, 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 responsible for the formation of habit, habitual substance taking, um, a powerful trigger, these parts of the brain, for negative reinforcement that contributes to compulsive drug seeking behavior and addiction. I would say it is clearly his vulnerability to experience addictions in this lifetime. So, what can we conclude about the fabulous Matthew Perry? Well, let's circle back to the Incarnation Cross, like I promised. Remember, I'm going to read it again very quickly. This cross carries the energy to say yes. And he obviously said yes to a lot of awesome things. Hello, friends. Thank you for being involved in that, Matthew. <laughs> it also carries enthusiasm for life and is driven to make things grand by marching to the beat. He definitely had a lot of enthusiasm in his character. And I believe he had a lot of enthusiasm for um, writing. I think writing uh, was very therapeutic for him as well. He wrote TV shows and movies, I believe, or maybe one of those. He was a writer <laughs> as well as an actor. These people are here to spread excitement and the word about whatever it is they are passionate about. He was obviously act passionate about acting, but obviously passionate about helping people overcome addictions as well. Okay, Because he had experience in that, he became the influencer. However, they are here on earth in a physical body and have some constraints. The important bit again, they need to set some limits to the number of things they can say yes to. They must ensure they agree only to what they are absolutely passionate about. If not, they will surely burn out. It seems to me that Matthew said yes to more things than he wanted to. He said yes when he wanted to say no, but he found it difficult to say no because potentially the emotions overwhelmed him when he said no and his brain would process that over and over again in a loop. How do I get out of these things? I don't know. The emotions, oh, people are going to react. And that could have led over time, it decreased the vitality in his sacral center here because this is an energy mode and this gives you a lot of energy to do the thing that you want to do, to have the passion in the world, to continually doing it. This burns out. You say yes when you don't want to say yes, when you should be saying no, when you want to say no, this burns out. Your sacral, it just kind of, it fatigues. It's, it fatigues. And I believe the addictions were a form of burnout for Matthew. They may have been um, a subconscious way to help him get out of the thing that he mentally wanted to get out of. He wanted to get to say no to things, but he didn't. So there was a physical manifestation that got him out of some of those things. It wasn't in a way that he would prefer. It wasn't in a way that's comfortable. He got him out of the thing in a way that actually meant he had to learn a lesson from it because the physical manifestation of the no was is harder than just saying no itself. Do you see what I mean? Okay, so I have some food for thought, some final thoughts. Now, in 1994, friends, 
it began on TV. Yay! I remember watching it every week. Loved it so much. By 1997, okay, in 97, Matthew had his jet ski accident that triggered his addiction to pain pills. Okay? So from 94 to 97, Yay, doing the TV show. Everyone's going, yeah, freaking awesome. Love it. Accident comes in in 97. Remember, accident related to that 46. He had that vulnerability to have a big accident if something is not in alignment with who he truly is. Okay. Now, it's possible that by 97, Matthew was feeling the pressure to say yes to so many things that didn't fully align with him. I'm sure he, I'm sure he was under a lot of pressure from the outside world to commit to a lot of things, probably promotion and all these other things he may not have preferred to have done. Um, but saying no could have been difficult to, for him. Again, that open solar plexus makes it hard and that open, by well, the undefined solar plexus and the open head in particular, oh, the brain is feel, gonna feel all the pressure, okay? Making it hard to, to say the yeses and the noes that are correct for you. Friends was freaking huge by 97. And while I suggest he was in love with his work, he loved playing Chandler Bing and having his creative outlets. I'm going to say it again. I sense he wanted to say no more than he could. So in the long term, this may have triggered a deep level of frustration, which remember is his not self as a generator. He's designed to have satisfaction and to deeply, intensely feel that passion of satisfaction. Frustration is him out of alignment. So this could have triggered a deep sense of frustration. And then his satin energies came in. This evolved into a crippling addiction, okay, in the physical world that also contributed to other health problems, which we have highlighted. Okay. Now, today, I actually believe that Matthew would be happy that he's triggered a conversation about addiction, okay? And that's because these conversations, such as this one, satisfies his unconscious son's desire to make a positive contribution and to inspire other towards change. So while it wasn't a comfortable path for Matthew, I do believe that he's... Um, met that influencer energy, that deep desire of wanting to influence the world for something he's passionate about. It just wasn't the easiest way to go to, through, to, to go about it. And remember, he had a deep desire to, um, in that first channel we looked at, to that 2946, to be a part of self-discovery, to be on a road of self-discovery this lifetime, even if it's freaking hard. And it was clearly freaking hard for him. Now, despite all of this, I do believe that Matthew has every reason to be very proud of himself. Okay, I hope you found that useful, inspiring, educational on some level. If you did, I would love to know. I'd love you to drop a comment or at least an emoji below if you found it useful in some way. It still honestly blows my mind that human design is able to show us how we are able to express our highest expression of ourselves and how we're maybe susceptible to some mm, health challenges where our weak spots are in this incarnation. It's such a fascinating tool. It continues to spark my brain in so many fascinating ways. Now, I am new to YouTube and I would absolutely adore it if you'd be able to like this video if you found it useful, even subscribe, maybe even share it. That would be amazing. I appreciate all the love, energy, and support that comes my way, and I return it to you as well. I'm sending all the, the high vibes through the lens to you right now. <laughs> so it is my hope that I will see you again in another video. In the meantime, I wish you a magnificent day.